So this video is going to be all about how powerful it is to walk away from women. I'm going to start off by playing this clip here. I just want to set it up for you. This woman decided to prank her husband by yelling at him for no reason to see how he responds. Let's take a look. Shut up! I'm almost ready! Whoa, what the heck was that? What? I'm what? Sorry. I'm You're sorry. being annoying! Okay, whoa, first off, we don't talk to each other like that, okay? I was just seeing if you were ready to go. I'm sorry if I was rushing you. I brought you a drink, but if something's going on, we need to talk about that. That, whoa. You okay? <laughs> what? I'm sorry. What? What the hell? What's going on? Are you okay? I was recording a tic tac. What? You where? It's someone other than run the dresser. Do you see my phone? Oh my! Oh, I, I was gonna. Say, we do not talk to each other like that. We do. Not, I was about to say. I was like, oh my god. I love this guy. I think he handled that perfectly. And I'm going to explain why. There was a clear communication of standards. That's not okay. We need to talk about how you just responded to me then. I'm not okay with this. I'm not going to stick around in a relationship where I get spoken to in that manner. If she was testing him, then he definitely passed because if he'd been like a little bitch boy about it, like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I apologize for existing. Whatever. He would have absolutely failed. He would have been gone. If a woman is ever this rude to you and you just tolerate it, then you're done. She's lost respect for you and of course then she's lost attraction for you women do not sexually desire men that they don't respect now some guys may think that his response was too soft but it wasn't and i'm going to explain why first of all when you're communicating a hard boundary like whoa that wasn't okay we do not speak to each other like that that boundary is already hard enough you don't need to overdo it by like yelling and screaming about it if a man ever feels the need to like throw a tantrum when he's enforcing his boundaries it's not a sign of stress it's actually a sign of weakness and fragility because he feels so unsure of himself, so unsure of his own boundaries that he needs to like intimidate the woman in order to feel safe again. But this guy didn't need to raise his voice because he's secure in himself. But Alexander, this is not just about communicating boundaries. Doesn't there need to be some kind of consequence for this woman? You know, she's done something wrong. Can't she have some kind of like punishment? If you got angry at her and yelled at her, wouldn't that be karma? Wouldn't that be justice? No, you're just singing to her level and you're more likely to get into an argument, she's just going to get worse and worse and worse. If your goal is to punish a woman or to provide consequences of some kind, you're not going to achieve anything by just getting angry at her and showing how mentally and emotionally fragile you are that you can get knocked off your center so easily. If your purpose is to scare a woman, you know what's actually going to be a lot more effective? It's walking away. Did you know that almost every single woman has a visceral fear of abandonment? That fear is a tangible tangible anxiety that most women feel at all times. And that's why walking away is actually a lot more effective. Now, sometimes that fear of abandonment has its roots in environmental influences. Like maybe she grew up in a household where her parents were not there for her very often. She has a messed up attachment style. She's got abandonment issues because her father, you know, left the house when she was age six, or he was just never there for her emotionally. That of course plays itself out in her romantic relationships. And in all her adult relationships, she's scared people are going to to leave her, but even if there were no environmental influences, let's say her childhood was perfect, at a biological level, women also have just an ingrained fear of abandonment. And you can look at the historical roots for this in evolution, because while of course it would suck if a man was abandoned and like banished and kicked out of the tribe, ultimately he's still a man. He's going to be able to physically protect himself against other men. He's going to be able to hunt his own food. Women were a lot more vulnerable to violence, starvation, rape, unfortunately. And so women really required the protection of the group in order to feel safe. The idea of being left behind or pushed out or abandoned is terrifying for women, which is why, like, with high school girl cliques, like, the worst punishment the girls can leverage at each other socially is, like, freezing them out, like, not talking to them, ghosting them. Like, that brings up all those tangible anxieties, that fear of abandonment. It's just awful for women. They'll do almost anything to prevent having to feel that feeling. So, back when I was single, I had this technique that I would sometimes use that was easy effective at generating attraction
affection from women towards me. It's probably quite politically incorrect to do this now, but back when I was a young guy, it seemed fine. But if I'm chatting to a girl at a party and like it's going well, the vibe's on, and I want her to desire me, just at the point when everything's going really well, I would turn my back to her. Like we're talking, we're laughing, we're flirting, we're having a good time. And then at the moment she would say something that's like a little bit off, I would just turn my back. She'd say something a bit strange and I'd just say, you're weird. And then I'd turn away from her. Make it like I'm going to walk off or I'm just going to go talk to somebody else. I remember a buddy of mine once saw me do this and he described to me afterwards the impact on the girl, like what happened to her face. And the way that he painted the picture was that like complete devastation, absolutely couldn't believe that that just happened, like terror. And of course, after a few seconds have passed, I turn around again and I'm smiling, I'm laughing. Hey, it's just a joke. I bring her in closer and we're back to having a good time. I tell her she's gorgeous, that I'm just teasing her and you could see the just the relief that comes over her face that she's not being abandoned as simple as it sounds that technique was crazy effective the few times i did it that girl would end up following me around the party for the rest of the night now psychologically what's occurred for her is really fascinating the the pickup artists back in the day they used to call this push pull so psychologically here's what you're doing you're like pulling her in bringing her closer to you you know giving her a good time entertaining her entertaining yourself being flirty being fun and like her emotions are just like peaking and she's having a really fantastic time. She's loving being around you. And then rapidly, you push her away. You take away all those good feelings. You essentially abandon her. You turn your back on her. She's rejected just for a few moments. But in those moments, a massive amount of emotions of fear, of insecurity come over her. That grief of losing the attention that she was so enjoying all those good times. And then just before she can really process all those emotions, you pull her right back in again. And then the return of all those positive emotions. No, you are special. We are having a good time. Here is my attention. The abandonment's not real. But I have just demonstrated to you that I have the power to bring all those negative emotions up. The reason why it generates so much attraction for the man doing it is because he is the source of her emotions. He's the one doing the pushing and the pulling. She's going on this like emotional roller coaster, like up and down, and spiking emotions in women is a very effective way at generating attraction. She's got these massive highs followed by these massive lows and then the relief that the low wasn't real and she's back to the high and any man that can make her feel that much is obviously going to be really attractive to her because it's like he has the power to enter into her personal psychic space. He's now so influential in what she's feeling at any one moment. It has a unique resonance with the feminine that there could be a man who can step into her space so boldly and make her feel so much. But the reason why push-pull worked so effectively is not just because of its capacity to generate emotions but also because it's a demonstration of your quality as a man, that you're willing to walk away at any moment. It doesn't matter how good the vibe is, how flirtatious you're both being, how much you're enjoying it, you can just turn your back at any moment and that's fine. Women these days are so sick of all the desperate losers who talk to them likely in this really needy, clinging way as though she's their only possible chance of happiness and he's so like blessed to be in her presence, he's just going to hold on and never let go. Do you think women want to have that kind of power over a man? Do you think it makes her feel good that she's so significant to him? No, it completely goes against what femininity wants. She wants the man to be rock solid and for her to be orbiting around him. For a man who has no sense of his own gravity, it's disgusting to her. She's like, oh, I did not ask to be your mother. No, absolutely not. Disgusting. Get away from me. I'm glad I get to talk about techniques like push-pull because even though this is not like a pickup channel, I'm not training guys in the art of game, I really wish more young guys would actually take the time to learn basic game theory and pick up skills like that's where I came from when I was like 19 20 that's how I developed my social skills and it's so incredibly valuable lots of young guys seem to be skipping this step and I think it's to their own detriment and the reason why they're skipping it is actually the topic of my latest patreon video you can click there if you want to check that out but guys should learn it they should get some field experience because you learn a lot about women when you actually watch them interact with you theory is all well and good but it's so much more impactful when you see it play out in real situations that's why I released my course with those 10 real stories that I get you to analyze so you can see how all this theory plays out in real life. But I'll give you another quick tip that you can use as a technique when you're like flirting with a girl at a party that also demonstrates the power of walking away. Because even if it's not as obvious as just like turning your back abruptly on a woman, if you leave a conversation with a woman at the peak of that conversation, just when the two of you are liking each other the most, you just suddenly say, hey, I've got to go get a drink or I'm just going to go talk to other people right now. That's going to be really effective at causing her to chase you, to see you as some high quality guy 
guy that she can't pin down that's not going to smother her or be needy you've probably heard her as like a sales technique or whatever like leave them wanting more this absolutely applies in dating and flirting if you build the conversation to it reaches like a high point and then you suddenly leave she's going to feel the absence of your presence and that's what you want you want her to miss you you want her to crave you you want her to chase you because that's the dynamic that women actually find attractive in order to be sure that the guy that she's interested in is a high quality guy she wants to put in a bit of effort to get him that's what's going to satisfy her hypergamy but too many guys have got this scarcity mindset and so they're not willing to do it they don't want to take that risk they're thinking hey it's finally gotten good like i'm chatting to this girl we're at this high point in the conversation why would i leave now i just got to stay here and milk this and enjoy this as as much as possible because i don't know when i'm next going to get a chance but the longer that they stay the worse the impression's going to be because it's like hey i was having a good time with this guy but now he's been chatting to me for like 40 minutes does he not have anybody else he can talk to what if i want to go chat to some other people you know far from enjoying his presence now i'm feeling a bit like socially burdened by him she has correctly identified that that is a man who's not willing to walk away and any man who isn't willing to walk away isn't a true man in her eyes it's really that simple think of it in terms of this metaphor as a man do you want to be a train or do you want to be an uber what does an uber do it comes whenever it's called it takes the woman exactly where she wants to go it's all about providing her with the best customer experience that she can get you know it's like oh i've got to be nice to you i've got to be polite because you know i need you to give me like a positive rating so that you'll hire me again at some point in the future i'm just at your beck and call men who act like that women find gross and disgusting women want men to be trains trains are big and powerful and they're on their track and they know which direction they're going you can't get in the way of a train because it's not going to stop they're not going to beg for reviews they're not going to ask the woman where does she want to go no the train has already got its destination mapped out it might temporarily stop at the station and if there's an empty carriage she can hop on but whether she does or whether she doesn't the train's just going to keep on going regardless that's you as a man that's how you have to be you have to know where you're going and you're going that way regardless if a woman comes along and she wants to get on board fine if she doesn't get on board doesn't matter you're going to go that same direction anyway you're not some uber driver that's like just going wherever she wants and begging for positive reviews in real terms what this means is that when you're at a party and you're talking to a girl keep chatting to her so long as it's interesting to you so long as it's entertaining you so long as that conversation fits in with your purpose for that night and for your life the moment that it doesn't fulfill that purpose you're not enjoying it anymore move on if she's interesting and engaging and entertaining then by all means keep talking to her but if she becomes distant or boring then just leave you walking away at that moment is not going to harm you because if she's not giving you adequate respect or attention in the conversation and you stick around anyway just praying she starts to get better the conversation gets more interesting she's not going to respect you when women feel like they have too much influence over men then they lose attraction if you need help implementing this advice into your actual dating life and relationships you can always reach out to me here because this principle doesn't just stop in the flirtation phase or in the dating phase it's also really important that when you're in a relationship with a woman you are able to walk away at any moment it's like that guy from the clip at the start of this video you know he said whoa we don't talk to each other that way like this is falling beneath my standards i'm not okay with this and like he demonstrated you don't have to be a dick about it it's not about like getting angry he was calm he was sensitive but at the same time he was unbudging no we don't talk to each other that way i am really curious how that clip is going to be received because i think that there are elements of the manosphere that mostly consume this content because they're looking for like woman gets owned like type of content and they just want to see like a man like put a woman in her place or whatever but i think for you guys who really understand the purpose of what i'm trying to do here you understand that this is about building relationship skills this is about making you happy not just temporarily giving you some kind of emotional cathartic release and the sort of raw unsexy non-clickbaity truth of the matter is that you're not going to succeed in a long-term relationship if it's all just about who's right and then being really short with each other no it's important to be inclusive to be calm to have good conflict resolution skills if you ever see me in a disagreement with my girlfriend you're not going to see me get all righteous and be like yeah well i'm in the right and so you need to get in line it's just not realistic that's not how two people who respect and love each other are ever going to communicate but as respectful and as calm as you can be in that process it's not a 
a problem to make sure that the foundational paradigm that you're having that conversation in, that frame is always one that I have certain standards for how we interact with each other. These standards need to be met. If they're not met, I'm going to have to walk away. It's not a threat. It's a fact. And what so many men don't realize is that without that being present, without that being the paradigm you're speaking in, no woman is going to respect you. No woman is going to be attracted to you. So many men out there thinking that they're doing women favors by letting them get away with anything, by never criticizing their behavior, for having no standards. The more I just sacrifice myself and what's right for me as a man and just let you do whatever you want, the more I'm showing like respect and love for you. It's bullshit. It's nonsense. And it doesn't work. Women don't respect it. She wants a man who can stand up for himself because if he can't stand up for himself, how is he going to be able to stand up for her when she needs it? How is he going to be able to stand up for their children? Women want strong men and you're kind of being a dick if you don't give her what she wants. The greatest kindness that you can give to a woman that you're in a relationship with is by holding these standards, which gives her something to shoot for. Because even if she falls short every now and then, she doesn't want to be told like, oh, well, that's basically all I expected of you. Of course, you're going to fail. It's like, no, I see something amazing in you. That's why I have these high standards. I think we can have a functional, healthy, loving relationship. That's what I want. And that gives her something to shoot for. And that's what she wants. Somebody who's going to bring out the best in her, the best of her self-esteem, the best of her femininity. And thank God you were there that you were a man, that you were strong, and you could serve as the motivation that she needed.